What's going on? Welcome to Tech with Sean, and today we're going to take a look at gaming on Apple's new 16-inch MacBook Pro. Not like that. Apple's new MacBook Pro actually has the 9th generation Intel CPUs and 7 nanometer Navi graphics from AMD, making it a capable gaming laptop. So let's take a look and see how it performs in some of today's games. All right, so in late 2019, Apple totally revamped the MacBook Pro lineup. They made it an inch bigger, uh, and that let them redo the keyboard, which had been an issue for a lot of people for a lot of times. We got an escape key and a power button. By making it an inch bigger, they were also able to improve the cooling substantially on it, and they were able to incorporate the new generation of AMD graphics chips, the 7 nanometer Navi. The system I have is the kind of higher of the two base specs, so it came equipped with the 2.3 gigahertz i9, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 1 terabyte SSD, and the 4 gigabyte variant of the 5500M. Now, as you may know, the game selection in macOS native titles is severely limited. Um, there is some stuff on Steam if you want to fire up like you know, American Truck Simulator or something like that. Those type of games are often on there, but not too many AAA games. I have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but it doesn't perform as well in macOS. I don't know if that's because of DirectX or driver optimization or what, but all of these games we're looking at are going to be running in Boot Camp. Now, I'm not going to get into a whole tutorial about installing Boot Camp in this video. There's a lot of videos on that, and it's easier than ever. You just basically follow the Boot Camp Assistant, um, download the Windows image. On these newer machines, you don't even have to burn it to a DVD or a USB stick. You just point the installer to where you downloaded the ISO, and it pretty much takes care of itself. Now once you have Windows 10 up and running in Boot Camp, there's still a couple more things you're going to want to get before we're ready for gaming. You're going to want to go over to bootcampdrivers.com and install the latest driver that they have there. You're going to want to install Throttle Stop, and we're also going to install an app called Max Fan Control that's going to let you control the fans in Windows. Up until recently, Max Fan Control actually didn't work in Windows on systems with the T2 security chip, and you had to do this process of like setting a constant fan speed in macOS and then restarting. But just, I think this morning, uh, they released a new version, and it actually has support in Windows 10. So. Once we get that installed, I'm going to show you how we monitor the fans and control the temperature through it. All right, well, let's head over to the system and um, I'll run through the tweaks that I have applied before we get into some gameplay. Okay, here we are on the MacBook Pro. And uh, just so you know how this is running, I dedicated 90 gigabytes of the SSD to the bootcamp partition. And then I have this two terabyte SanDisk SSD and it just hooks up with USB-C. And I have all my games installed on that. I apologize beforehand, but there's a few reasons why I'm going to record this off screen. Um, first of all, the MacBook Pro is a different aspect ratio. It's 16 by 10. Uh, second of all, I'm kind of a noob when it comes to the AMD recording software. And uh, finally, I don't want to impact the GPU performance at all because it's only a 4 gigabyte chip. And I'm going to try to play some of these games at higher resolutions. Okay, so the first tweak we're going to look at is throttle stop. Now, traditionally, you were able to go into throttle stop and change the um, undervolt, and that was able to, like, you know, drastically improve your CPU temperatures. But on this uh, MacBook Pro, you can click this and unlock them and everything, but it doesn't change anything. You can hit apply. It looks like it changes, but it doesn't actually change your voltage. Um, another tweak I would usually do would be to limit these boost clocks over here. But again, um, they're locked down and you're not able to change it. Really, you can't change anything in this whole menu meaningfully. Uh, what you can do, though, is if you come over here to the TPL menu, what I've done is I dragged these uh, time limits all the way down as far as I could. And then I disabled Turbo Boost Short Power Max. I left Turbo Boost Long Power Max enabled, and then I manually keyed in the value of 48 for these three fields. And now I'm no throttle stop expert, and I kind of just did this by playing with the values, but by doing this, it keeps the CPU running mostly between like 
2.9 gigahertz and 3.4 gigahertz and that really uh, you know gives you better performance for games than if you left it at the base clock of 2.3 gigahertz but it's going to keep temperatures way more in check than if you let it boost all the way up to 4.1 so I would just suggest doing that um, and you know you can always go in and mess with those values if you want more or less clock speed to get it running the best for what you want okay so the other part of this uh, performance equation is max fan control you want to get at least version 1.54 because um, those are the ones that are going to work in Windows and Boot Camp. Now how I have this set up, I have the control. I went in here and I clicked on sensor based value. And for the left side fan, which that's the CPU, I went ahead and I chose CPU PECI. And I think this is going to give you a more general CPU temperature because if you pick one of the individual cores, they're more prone to spiking and, uh, you know, they have their own individual temperature, but this is going to be kind of more like the whole package temperature. And I went ahead and set the fan to start increasing from 60 C and I set the maximum temperature at 78 C. So once it gets up to like 80 C, the fans are going to run on max. And then on the GPU, uh, which is the right side fan, I went ahead and set that for the GPU PECI, and I left the values the same as I did on the CPU. So 60C for the temperature that the fan speed will start and maximum temperature of 78C. So with a combination of settings from both throttle stop and max fan control, you should be able to keep your temperatures in check while gaming. And uh, yeah, it's actually a pretty impressive system. So let's jump in here and see what it can do. All right, first up, let's take a look at Forza Horizon 4. Now, right off the bat, we're running this at a higher resolution than most Windows laptops. This is 16 by 10, so we're running it at 2560 by 1600. This is actually a higher resolution than even a 1440p monitor. We have it set for 60 frames per second, and we have the custom graphics settings so it's mostly on high but then I set the endostropic filtering for ultra and uh, I dropped the texture quality down to medium just because with the four gigs of VRAM at the higher resolution uh, you're really pushing the four gigabyte limit when you have it on high we have MSAA on 2x um, I turned the ambient occlusion up to medium by default when you set it for a high it's off and I think everything else is on high. So let's jump into the benchmark and see how it does. All right, we're off to the races. Now, I'm recording off screen and I hope you guys can make out the frame counter up there in the corner, but it's been a locked 60 frames per second the whole time. And this beginning part of the benchmark, when you have all the cars in the pack, this is really the most demanding part. Typically, if you're gonna drop frames, it drops them right there at the beginning. It looks really good here running at 2560 by 1600. Now this Apple display is more focused on color accuracy than response time, so it doesn't have like a three millisecond gray to gray time like some of your gaming uh, 144 hertz panels do, but I haven't run, run into any issues um, playing games like this or Far Cry or some others. Um, it's been exceedingly usable for me. And uh, I have the music turned down here while I'm doing this, but the speakers built into this MacBook are pretty amazing too, so overall like the audio visual experience when you're playing a game is delivered really well. Um, the only I would say downside would be if you're like a competitive Counter-Strike Go player, you might want a faster display. But you can see here on the benchmark results, we achieved 60 frames per second and uh, we were actually rendering a little bit above that. so you're going to be able to play at settings like this with no problem. For whatever reason, the afterburner overlay doesn't work in Forza Horizon, but now we're going to load up Red Dead Redemption 2, and uh, I have the display up, so we'll be able to see some more meaningful performance information. Jumping into the graphic settings, I'll show you how I have it set up. The highest resolution I've got it to run well at is 1680 by 1050. It still looks really good. Um, have it set for full screen, V-Sync on. Down here, uh, let's see, 
texture quality ultra if you drop it to high the ground textures and stuff start looking really bad so I would recommend leaving that on ultra 8 times filtering lighting on medium uh, global illumination on low shadows on medium ambient occlusion on medium mirrors on high particles tessellation and TAA on medium most of the extended settings are on low except the the water refraction and reflection I put on medium because it looks pretty bad um, on low and water physics if you put it all the way to low it looks really bad too so I just turned it up one notch I have the resolution scale set for nine tenths um, you really you don't need that it just kind of helps you from bottlenecking or dropping frames a few times motion bore off geometry and grass I have turned down pretty low and I have these on medium now these aren't the highest settings but I think it is better than the settings that Xbox uses so when I'm playing it I think it looks pretty good okay now here we are in the game I can't tell how this is gonna come across on the camera recording off screen but in person uh, this game looks absolutely gorgeous on the 500 nit IPS screen temperatures you can see uh, we haven't been playing very long but they're in the high 70s in my experience um, with these settings it's gonna run between the high 70s and low 80s I really haven't seen it hit 90 degrees on anything yet it's nighttime so I don't know if that's really the best time to show it off I'll try going back to the camp and then I'll, uh, I'll sleep till the morning alright well here we are uh, we got this loaded up and you can see that our temperatures are in the low 70s to about 80 and that's really where I've seen them stay in as I've been playing this uh, the highest I've seen it get is about 84 and I haven't seen it get anywhere near 90 like it was at stock settings still good performance though um, it's keeping that 60 frames per second here in the camp it can actually be a pretty intensive area on the GPU. There's a lot of geometry and detailed characters and um, if it's running good here you're probably going to be good almost anywhere in the game. When you get to the San Denis area you may need to turn a couple things down or uh, turn the resolution scaling down just a little bit but at these settings this game is really playable. Alright, now jumping into another popular Rockstar game, let's take a look at how Grand Theft Auto V runs. I'll drop into the settings here and show you what I have it set for. Now you can actually run this at native resolution if you want to turn off all the anti-aliasing and turn the effects down low, but I thought that running it at 1920 by 1200 with a mix of settings was the best looking. So we have 1900 by 1200. Uh, two times MSAA most of the stuff is on high or very high um, I have reflection MSAA off post effects on high no motion blur um, AF on 16 ambient occlusion and tessellation on high and it runs quite well at these settings it's kept 60 frames per second um, basically everywhere that I've seen in the game so far. Wait a minute, I was trying to steal that car not get in it. <laughs> hey! There we go. Now I'm committing some Grand Theft Auto. That's what we all came here for. So yeah, as you can see, we're driving around, um, and it's not not dropping frames at all. Our temperatures are still sitting the same spot. You know, we got the high 70s, low 80s in most games. And um, yeah, I think if you want to fire up some GTA 5 on here, you'll have a pretty good experience. Now we're going to drop into Rocket League real quick, and um, a lot of laptops can run this game pretty well, but here on the MacBook Pro. 
We're running this at 3072 by 1920, that's native resolution, and we have all the settings crunk up to high. Alright, now you can see here that um, it's actually pushing the GPU pretty hard, but it's maintaining 60 frames per second. And at this super high resolution with all the settings maxed out, Rocket Lead looks really, really good. <laughs> Now, even though this isn't the fastest response time of the monitor, um, I haven't found that it made much of a difference at all. Oh no, get out of there. I'm talking, I almost made a goal on my own team. But yeah, the performance holds up really well. Um, you can see that it's boosting the GPU all the way up to over 1400 megahertz. Our temperatures are still in line. And um, yeah, this is a really, really good experience. Now I don't know, if you have a 5300M, maybe you want to drop a couple things down because this looks like it's really pushing the 5500M to the max. It's not using all the VRAM, so that shouldn't be an issue. But this is a really really nice way to play Rocket League on your laptop, if you ask me. <laughs> now we're taking a look at Far Cry New Dawn, and we have this set for 1920 by 1200 for the resolution, and uh, I have custom settings. We have ultra high, 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 um, low for the fog, TAA, and then I have motion blur off because yuck. Um, on the next page, I have VSync off and uh, let's see, I'll turn off the frame rate lock so we can see in the benchmark, but for whatever reason, I have more stutter happening in this game than others. I don't know if it's because of driver optimization exactly or what. Um, I don't really have an AMD desktop card, so I'm not really familiar with how this game performs uh, on AMD cards, but you can see here it's dropping under 60. And in the actual gameplay itself, it hovers around 60, and the system feels like it can do 60, um, but for whatever reason, just every like second or two, it drops just like three frames. It's like 57, 59, 60, 60, 58, 60. It's just kind of all over the place and stuttery. It almost doesn't feel like it's a a limitation of the system, but rather something is just messed up with how it's running. But I was pretty impressed with it overall. You can see here, um, it's keeping, you know, high 50s for most of the time. And I think this is actually running smoother than the Zephyrus that I just looked at. That one, even after I upgraded it to the 16, or added to the 16 gigabyte DIMM to get it in dual channel, even the i7 and 2060 uh, seem to be dipping a lot, but I think this is actually not bad. I mean, it's not good and it's not optimized right. Something is going on. Let me, I'll drop into the game real quick. Loading times aren't too bad. Um, this USB-C SSD, it does a really good job um, for holding your game's library and stuff. So. Don't fret about using too much space on your internal SSD, just give yourself enough for windows and a cushion, and then uh... Yeah, see, I don't know if you can see this, but it's like, lagging out. And uh, it's not even saying that the frames are dropping, necessarily. Sometimes it just kinda gets jittery. And then sometimes it does drop frames right, th right there. It dropped to 55 for a second. And if you look up here at the clock speed, it says it's dropping a lot. And I don't know how accurate that is um, because we're using the weird, you know, bootcampdrivers.com drivers and stuff. Um, so I'm not really sure. It says I'm only using like 60% of the GPU. So. We can go in and we can up the resolution, but once you go too far, it starts to seem like you're dropping frames, uh, you know, because you have your GPU maxed out. Ah, 
this actually seems to be running pretty decent at the higher resolution too. So here you go. Um, you saw right there it was dropping some frames. Whoa. Where did she come from? But, I mean, it's still... This is a totally playable experience, and the Far Cry games are never really optimized, and my main desktop machine, I have a 9900K at 5 GHz and a 2080 Ti, and even on that setup, this game is not the most stable as far as the frame rate and everything, so... I'd say it's an outlier. You can still play it, but it doesn't run as smooth as the other stuff I've tried. Alright, so here we are with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And uh, we're going to try to run this at 2560 by 1600 But we're going to limit the frame rate to 30 frames per second, kind of like Xbox One X or something. And we're running it on a mix of settings. Um, you really want to watch out for volumetric clouds because that will kill the frame rate. And you want to watch out for texture detail also because we only have uh, 4 gigs to work with. If you go too high and you run out of VRAM, your game's going to get real stuttery on you. Alright, here we are, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Now, we are only playing it at 30 frames per second like a console, but that um, high resolution looks really nice. I'm not really sure what's up with the afterburner overlay, but I'm pretty sure that it's using more than 1% of the GPU uh, to run Assassin's Creed at 2560 by 1600. <laughs> That's one thing. I think the, um, the bootcampdrivers.com drivers, they work a lot better than the official ones. Uh, when I installed the official ones, it wouldn't even boot Red Dead 2. But for whatever reason, I don't trust the information coming out of Afterburner about it. The temperature, I mean that seems okay, and I think that the power power readings are okay, but the clock speeds and the utilization numbers just seem like they're kind of all over the place. As you can see though, it's um, it's really playable. And if you want to drop some settings, you could probably go ahead and play it at 60. Alright, last game I wanted to show off was uh, some emulation. So we're going to take a look at Breath of the Wild running in Simu. And now, to get this running at 60 frames per second, you really need a super high clocked uh, processor. And um, just because it's a laptop and we have the clock speed limited a little bit, it's not going to work for 60 frames per second. But it's going to do a stable 30 and uh, with these new GPUs they work with Vulkan and Simu has been updated to support Vulkan. With the 4 gigs of VRAM I'm running this at 2880 by 1800 and uh, this game looks just really crisp and vivid on this 500 nit IPS screen. The sound is really good and uh, even though it's 30 frames per second it's way better than playing it on the Switch, in my opinion, and um, it's a really good way to play the game, I think. Alright, here we are. We got super vivid color, super high resolution Zelda running on the MacBook. And, um, well, I'm doing all types of stuff. I'm still trying to do the Assassin's Creed controls. <laughs> But you can see that it keeps the 30 frames per second, no problem. It, oh, it just cached a shader right there. I haven't played a lot of Simu on here, so if you notice any hitches like that, it's probably because of shader caching. I tried to run around this area some before I started recording, just so it wouldn't be hitching all over the place. But as you can see, this looks really nice on here. Um, I mean, this game is all about like the style and the color, and the color just pops on this screen. It's easily one of the best laptop screens that I've ever used. But what you say, Breath of the Wild is not my type of game. Never fear, Simu has you covered. <laughs> Here we've got um, Mario Kart 7. Now this is running at 60 frames per second, and this is still at the, um, I think it's 
2880 by 1800 or whatever resolution. So this is not quite 4K, if it's like 1800p versus 2100p or whatever. Um, and uh, I mean, this looks like so crisp when you're playing it. Whoa, I'm trying to talk and drive and I can't do it. But um, I mean, this is one of the easier games probably to run in Simu. Uh, so it's not a surprise that the MacBook Pro can play it pretty well, but seeing it, you know, do it while keeping the thermals under like 100 degrees, and uh, thanks to the new 7 nanometer AMD GPU, being able to play it at this super high resolution, um, it's a much better experience probably than you would have had on most previous MacBooks, and. It's really a better experience than I would say a lot of gaming laptops um, just because none of them are gonna, very few of them have 4K screens and um, you know, color accuracy like this or speakers like this. So, you know, any laptop you can get good sound with some headphones, but being able to just turn up the sound on this and uh, let it ride, you know? It's just a, a nice feeling system to use. I'll turn up the sound on here real quick so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. Oh, as I drive into the wall. Now I'm not sure how the mic will pick this up, but I have a lavalier mic just clipped onto my shirt. So the laptop is about three feet away in front of me on the table and uh, I imagine that you can hear the sound on the microphone now and it comes across really loud in person. But that was a look at the Simu emulator running here on the MacBook Pro. Now um, I tried Mario Kart, Zelda, I tried the other Zelda, the Wind Waker, and I tried Mario 3D World and all of them ran definitely playable on here so I think no matter what one you're trying to run um, as long as it works on you know any computer I think it's gonna be fine on here alright we got one last game that I had to throw in here for a few reasons um, first of all I like the game second of all it has really vivid color and it looks great on this screen and third of all it highlights a weird quirk that some games will have so as you can see here, you only set like the resolution in this as a percentage of the native resolution, I guess. And the actual native resolution of this is super high. Um, and the game can't play well at that high of a resolution. You can't pick any good resolutions by default. So what I did was I set the desktop resolution to 1920 by 1200 because that's what I want to run it at. So before, I could only go from 1440 and the next step down was 960 but by setting the desktop resolution to 1920 by 1200 I'm able to pick that as the resolution in the game so if you run into any games uh, where you're not able to pick the the setting you want for resolution because of the weird resolution of the monitor itself then I would suggest um, just exiting the game, setting the desktop resolution in Windows to be what you want, and then restart the game, and then it will see, um, you know, it will see those changes once you boot it back up. This game really highlights how vivid the color is on this panel. The 500 nits gives you really good contrast between the light and dark areas. And um, I haven't noticed almost any backlight bleeding at all. One other thing about the MacBook screens is that they're glossy. Now most laptop screens are um, matte finish and they do that so that it cuts down on glare. But I actually find that having the uh, glossy screen, even though you do get a little bit more glare, like if I move this you'll be able to see glare from the lights and stuff. But when that's when you're not in like direct light 
the the glossy screen just gives you a much richer color and I actually prefer it. All right, well, thanks for watching along as we took a look at gaming on the new 16-inch MacBook Pro. If anybody tells you you can't game on a Mac, just send them a link to this and tell them they're wrong. <laughs> now, there are some concessions that you're going to make by gaming on a Mac. Um, you know, there's no 144 hertz screen, no J-Sync options, uh, you know, limited connectivity with just the four USB-Cs. But the audio-visual experience, um, Gaming on that 500 nit high resolution panel and with the the build quality and the audio quality you get It's really hard to match um, with other gaming laptops in my opinion and Don't tell Bill Gates, but I might just make this my new main laptop. So Thanks for watching along. I hope some of the performance tips helped if you had any questions or you have any thoughts or comments Make sure to drop them down below, give us a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and we'll see you in the next video.